Hey students, how's it going? With this lesson, we are learning about the landing at Normandy, aka the Normandy Invasion, D-Day. So this is what is considered the decisive turning point for the Navy during this time. This is, uh, this is one of the big battles that happens in 1944. This is the battle to take back France from the Nazis. This is the British and American forces versus the Nazis. So let's get into it. We're going to learn about whether or not it actually was a decisive victory and what happened during it and why we need to learn about what is going on during this time and how it changed the outcome of the war. So during this time, the Nazis had taken over France. Remember, Blitzkrieg. They took over. Attack, 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 keep attacking until, until you surrender. That is Blitzkrieg continue to attack a lightning war this is what they had done all throughout europe they tried it with britain thankfully they did not take over britain however they were able to take over france very very quickly and swiftly this was an area of interest to invade for the united states and for britain they needed to take back over this place in order to get france back on their side without getting france back on their side it would be hard to win the war So, there were many different areas of which to attack. They decided on the landing at Normandy on all four beaches. This is where they decided that they were going to take the attack. Most importantly, the Nazis did not know where the attack was going to be. They knew that there was going to be attack, that there was going to be an attack. However, they did not think it was going to be in this location because of the because of how it looked. There are sheer steep cliffs at Normandy. Therefore, they did not think this is where they were going to attack. As I was saying, the terrain is very, very rough. Sheer, steep hills, rock faces of over 15 feet high. The ladders couldn't even reach up. The point of it, and what is now said by, and what was said by a lot of the generals afterward, is they didn't expect the ladders to reach up. They knew that there was going to be enough death that they could stack the, the ladders on top of all the dead bodies in order to reach the top. They knew that there was going to be mass casualties at this location, which there were. Most importantly, the reason why the United States and Britain needed this, this was a choke point. In order to get things in and out around the area, they needed to get this location under American and British control, under Allied control. They did it so they needed it so much that they actually gave incorrect hints to the Germans to mislead them to the location of where they were going to be attacking. Once again, German knew that they were going to be attacking. They knew they were going to be attacked. They just did not know the location of where. So Britain and the United States were continuing to let out false information of where they were going to attack and make sure that it got into the hands of the Germans. The actual attack, June 6th, 1944. This is D-Day. There was 351,700 troops, both Britain, both British and American, and 50,000 Nazis. So it was a seven to one Allied forces over British forces. We had the numbers. We also had the attack in a place that, that Nazi Germany did not know of where it was going to be. Germany did not have all their forces at Normandy. Instead, they were lined up throughout the area. Once again, they did not know where the attack was going to be. Therefore, they spread their forces. They didn't spread them thin. There were still a lot of forces everywhere, but there was not a huge cluster of forces in one area like the United States and Britain was doing. Because of this, that's how the United States was only able to, to attack against 50,000 instead of maybe 500,000. This was a great tactic by British and American troops. Most importantly, they needed to go with the tide cycle. They need to attack between low and high tide. 
if they did not attack during this time, they would not be able to get all the ships through. They needed to attack when the tide was coming in and not going out. They needed to push the troops inward. By pushing the troops inward, this would give them the momentum that they needed to reach the seas. A total of four beaches were attacked. One that we always hear about is Omaha Beach. However, there were others. There was Juno, Gold, Sword Beach, and there was Utah Beach, which most people do not talk about. That is a little bit different than this. However, it was still during the same time frame. It was actually a little bit earlier. But the four major beaches were Omaha, Juno, Gold, and Sword Beach. These were where all the different attacks were happening in Normandy in order to take over to get this out of Nazi Germany command. There was issues with the planning of this. There was a storm during this time. They actually threw a lot of the boats off courses. They landed at their own beaches. This is why Utah Beach is in there. It wasn't supposed to be an attack. However, because of the weather, they ended up attacking Utah Beach as well. The weather, as I said, was not cooperating. There were a lot of huge storms. If they decided to wait for the weather to cooperate, it would have been an additional two weeks. However, the ships were already in the English Channel. They cannot wait an additional two weeks. That is why many landed at the, at the wrong location. Once again, the ladders were not tall enough to reach the top of the rocks. As Eisenhower and many other generals have stated during this time, they knew they were not tall enough. The point of it was they were going to stack it on top of the dead bodies in order to reach. They knew it was going to be a mass casualty situation. Anytime that you are attacking against a sheer rock base, when you're attacking up, there is going to be mass casualties. Therefore, they felt if they did a smaller ladder, it would be less heavy, therefore making it easier for them to get up. This is when we're talking about the decisive win. Was it really a decisive win? It lasted a total of around 40 days. We don't know exactly when the last day was, but it was around mid-July and it started June 6th. So it's around 40 days. Over 10,000 Allied casualties, so huge mass casualties during this time. The Nazis, only 5,000. Nazis have a huge amount of casualties during this time, considering to the 35,000 troops that they had. They had 5,000. This is why they had to retreat. However, if you notice, 10,000 casualties versus 5,000. The reason why we call this a decisive win is because this is the first time that the Allies were able to invade and take over France since France had gotten taken over during Blitzkrieg. So it was very important because now we can have France, all the troops and all the troops in France now join the Allied nation in order to attack against the Germans as well. So this added troops to the war cause. This is why it is a decisive win, is because we now have more troops to fight against the Germans. So although yes, we lost way more troops we did so with knowing that we're going to gain more troops on the back end so yes a lot of Americans died way, uh, way more Americans than Nazis but we won in the end because of this battle now we are going to watch a quick video of the attack on Normandy and all the beaches Give me one second, we seem to be having some technical difficulties with the sound. We're going to get this straightened out for you, I apologize about that. Working from home is a little bit different. The Allies have landed 150 men in Normandy. The five beaches were secure and the troops were pushing inland. The Allies have gained air and sea superiority 
However, the landing forces were not as strong as they could have been. Those are actual pictures of the people aircraft. going into the to Battle of Normandy. This, months of intensive air attacks were carried out against railway lines, roads, and bridges across France with the aim of making it difficult for the Germans to move reinforcements easily into Normandy. At the same time, a deception was in motion to convince the Germans that the Allies were planning to land further east in the Pas de Calais region. These strategies were both a success. Allied Supreme Commander General Dwight D. Eisenhower led 3 million men, 13,000 aircraft, 2,500 landing craft, and 1,200 warships. New equipment included two tank variants, the obstacle crossing tank and the bunker busting tank used on the Anglo-Canadian beaches. So in not only was this, it a lot of troops, they were bringing in a lot of formations. different tanks, Follow a lot of different things in order to attack. Harbors with the fuel supplied by Pluto, standing for pipeline under the ocean. The Germans were aware of an Allied invasion, but lacked any intel of where it would be coming from or its strength. Field Marshal Erwin Rommel <laughs> commanded the German forces in northern France and believed that his only chance was to defeat the invading force before it got ashore. He wanted to spread his reserves along the coast so that they could attack the landing forces straight away as the Allied air forces would make it difficult to redeploy more distant units. Rommel's superior, Commander-in-Chief West Field Marshal Gerd von Grunstedt, meanwhile wanted a strong central reserve that would be sent in once it was obvious where the main Allied landings were taking place. In the end, there was a compromise. Some reserves were near the Normandy coast, but were not allowed to be deployed without permission from Hitler. The landings. There were five These landing all areas. The different Utah beaches. and Omaha, which involved U.S. troops, and Gold, Juno, and Sword, which involved British and Canadian troops. Two U.S. Airborne Divisions landed by parachute and glider inland from Utah and one British Airborne Division on the east flank of Sword. They took most of their objectives and disrupted possible German counterattacks. On Omaha Beach, German resistance was the most fierce, with heavy Allied casualties. But by the end of the day, the beach was clear. Utah Beach was the easiest to clear, while the other three beaches were somewhere in between. It was important for the Allied troops to gain as much territory as possible, to make room for the follow-up forces. The inland advance later in the day, however, came up short of the D-Day objectives of Caen and Bayeux. There would be much harder fighting in the days to come. Subscribe to see more history videos. Get simple history. We'll... So as you can see, this was something that was very decisive. It was not just naval personnel. It was everyone fighting. Both British, American, and Canadian troops all fighting as one in order to relieve and save France. Air was very important. They needed to do the bombardments beforehand in order to set up for the attack. Question, how did we trick the Germans? Did it work? The video alluded to it. I alluded to it a little bit earlier. Did this work? So now we're going to get into our group activity. After watching and listening to the lesson, Split up into groups of at least four people, if not more. Up to you. We need at least four separate groups, though. Within your groups, discuss whether or not you think this was a decisive victory. Would you call it a decisive victory? Like the United States and what Germany now calls it, what Britain calls it, what Canada calls it. Would it be a decisive victory in your eyes? Also, prepare to have talking points about where you would have attacked. If you were the person leading the invasion, if you were one of the generals, where would you have attacked? Would it have been those five beaches, or would you have attacked in a different location? Would it have been Normandy at all? Remember, there are many places that you could have attacked in France. They decided on Normandy. Would you have decided on somewhere else, somewhere closer to Spain maybe, as they are neutral? Where would you have attacked? Please write at least five sentences and have one person present your argument. Once this is done, each presenter will have about two minutes to go and discuss their argument and what they have written down, and then about a minute for other people to respond. 